Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, and I host the Valder Beebe Show on FM radio and internet television. I am famously known for that celebrity interview, which I conduct by cell phone, in studio, or satellite media tours. Go to ValderBeebeShow.com, YouTube.com slash ValderBeebeShow, or our partnership network with Business in the Black, which is BlackSuccessAcademy.com, and click on the Valder BB Show channel. I'll see you there. Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Thatcher. And who did, I'm sorry, and your, and your guest you brought with you? Amber Vizi. Hey, Amber. Thank you for joining us today in Dallas, Texas. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Dr. Thatcher, would you set the medical uh, uh, conversation for us this morning for my audience? Absolutely. So April is Irritable Bowel Syndrome Awareness Month, and it's a very important topic. They're navigating through this world of IBS can be really daunting on patients, walking through aisles of over-the-counter laxatives, supplements, patients change their diet, and their symptoms to still keep coming back. And these symptoms are bothersome. They're constipation, they're abdominal pain, they're bloating, gassiness, not a lot of glamorous symptoms, but things that people need to start talking to their doctor about. Amber, you're joining us. Tell us, give us a synopsis of your story from a, a layman's perspective. Well, first I had my endoscopy when I was only seven. From then I continued to suffer from intestinal distress. It wasn't until college that my symptoms really came back relentlessly. I was constipated and still going to the bathroom, but my stomach was so bloated and distended, I looked like I was five months pregnant. I couldn't fit into my clothes and it was messing with my body image in ways that took quite a few years to recover from. I went to the emergency room three times in one summer for abdominal pain cause unknown. The cause was my IBS-C. I had been suffering and struggling with my condition, trying to manage my diet, change what I was e eating, keeping symptom logs, taking over the counter laxatives, constantly and I wasn't seeing the relief that I knew I deserved to feel. I felt like there wasn't a light at the end of the tunnel until my doctor actually prescribed me Linzess in January 2013 when his office first released it. Since taking Linzess, I take it in the morning, it helps me get ahead of my symptoms so I can be proactive with my condition instead of being reactive now. I like to say that I have IBSC, but it doesn't have me anymore. I'm in control and not my condition now. All right. Congratulations Thank on that. Thank you. Dr. Sasher, let me ask you. It says 13 million Americans suffer from IBS with constipation. That's a lot of people. It's a lot. And I think that number is actually underestimated. There's so many patients who've come to me and they've tried many over-the-counter laxatives. And though they temporarily work, like I mentioned, their symptoms just keep coming back. And that's why they need to open up to us. Because once they tell us what's going on, we can make a diagnosis and we can get you on the appropriate treatment because unlike some of the over-the-counter laxatives, Linzess works differently. It targets what the root of the problem is. It targets that fluid secretion. It gets fluid into your bowel so you can have an easier bowel movement. And it also calms those pain sensing nerves. So the abdominal pain, which is a real hallmark of this condition, can be under control as well. Let me ask you also to Dr. Sasher, is there anything that we do to contribute to IBS, meaning our diet, uh, not enough hydration? Well, the way that this condition, IBS-C, manifests itself is really different in different people. No two people have the exact condition, the exact triggers. What flares someone's IBS-C might not necessarily flare someone else. So keeping a log of what you eat and what you do and when your symptoms occurs is really the best advice I could give patients in addition to opening up about it and getting it out there in front of your doctor. Okay, and so if you think you have IBS instead of just constipation, what do you need to tell your doctor? 
you need to tell your doctor, listen, I have these symptoms. Is there something you can do? And our answer will be yes. And, and I've used Linzess in my practice since 2012 and having great response for it. People not need to talk to their doctor. Is this the right medication for me? It is for people over 18. And as with any medication, there can be side effects, but it has worked tremendously well in my practice. I want to ask Amber one more question. Amber, as a former sufferer, what do you what do you say to people listening? I want to say to people listening out there right now that embrace your condition. Do not be embarrassed. Do not be ashamed. You don't have to suffer in silence. Just because talking about having toilet talk isn't glamorous doesn't mean that you have to be alone because you're not. The numbers prove that you're not. Educate yourself and advocate for yourself when you go to your doctor's office and you don't have to feel that this is something you need to hide, but I'm the first to say I'm on TV right now talking about it. And it's my hope that by sharing my story, I'll encourage others to open up those conversations with their healthcare providers and doctors and seek the relief that they deserve because no one deserves to feel like they're struggling and suffering in silence because you're not alone and there is treatment out there. Thank you so much, Amber. Thank you. I hope you stay well and healthy. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Thatcher, you know, as we wrap up, where would, you, where would you send my audience to get more information? I would send the audience to lensus.com for some great information. Ladies, thank you so very much, and thank you for doing this toilet talk, and that's what I'm going to call it, toilet <laughs> talk interview. Thanks for having me. Thank you very us. much. Take care.